People see me as human. <laughs> no one should be treated like this. <laughs> Thanks for making me cry, Brute. <laughs> Hello and welcome to this very special conversation at CAN 2023. We are here with Sunny Leone. Sunny, thank you so much for speaking to Brute. Thank you so much for having me. I'm going to start by asking you, can it be a big moment? Uh, you know, it's been showcasing you at the Lumina. Tell us a little bit about the film, your role in it. Well, my character's name is Charlie. And um, I believe she's a character who's stuck in two different worlds almost, the one where she wants to have and the one that she's stuck in and how she has to navigate through that and her feelings towards all of it. So Anurag shared, uh, you know, that he showed you Ravina, uh, Tandan and Anushka's uh, clips on how they laugh. Yes. Uh, so, you know, I watched it, I was like, what? <laughs> what do you want me to do? What? <laughs> okay. That's what I meant. Like, I need to get this out of my system. For them, it's second nature um, to laugh like this because it's a part of their being and system. And I was like, okay, I don't laugh like this. <laughs> he also shared, uh, you know, in an interview with the media that um, when he was looking for Charlie, when he was looking for the right act of Charlie, uh, he was uh, looking at your videos, uh, you know, MMS Ravani, etc. And he said that uh, uh, he saw sadness in your eyes and he said, this is my Charlie. She could really fit on the Charlie role. What do you think he was, uh, you know, talking about? Did he speak to you about yeah, what he, he felt? Um, if that's what he saw in me to be Charlie, then amen. I'm, ha I'm, I'm happy. <laughs> um, I am so proud to be a part of this film. I can't even tell you. The fact that he picked up the phone and called. I cried the whole time on this, sorry. Um, the fact that he picked up the phone. I always tell him thank you for picking up the phone and calling me to audition. And this moment is so special because of everything that I've gone through over the last 10 years. And I'm not saying everything was bad. There's lots of amazing moments. But there's a lot of fighting to get here. There's a lot of, not physical fighting, I'm talking about emotional or fighting different governments or fighting different, you know, like groups of people or, um, you know, different sectors within the industry and dealt with a lot of different hate, a lot of good. I'm not saying the hate from my fans. My fans are the best fans and they're really the only reason that I'm standing. But all the other things that happen within the industry and fighting through it. That's why I am like so emotional about this film. The idea of being here in France um, at the Cannes Film Festival is like the cherry on the cake. <laughs> Tell us a little bit about the stereotypes that you, you know, fought within the industry. Uh, just what you were just talking about right now. So many things. Um, I think what I'll own up to is I decided to come in this industry from a industry that is not socially accepted. I get it. I understand. I completely agree that it's not the norm and the whole situation is not of the norm. But at the end of the day, I'm still a person. I'm still a human being. I still have feelings. And um, being able to show people, and it's not something that happens like overnight. It's taken 10 years <laughs> to push past a lot of the negative and push past a lot of the things that people say. And um, Again, it wasn't necessarily my fans, it was everybody else. What, what, what are the kind of things that people would say if you would approach for a movie or a role? No, I've been approached by many people, but let's say some of these bigger companies um, or different you know, actors or actresses that have had issues. Um, and they you know, decided that they wanted to use somebody else. The only thing that I have in my pocket is that with me comes X amount of um, exposure. Exposure in the way like reach to different, like a different audience. There are different groups of people that say, no, we don't want her here. And to fight through the system of saying, no, I'm just, I'm just here to attend somebody's wedding. Like, why are you using me to, you know, get on some weird political gain out of this? Or having people make up stories about you 
and filing cases or doing, you know, so many different crazy things um, that you have to fight the system in a different way. It's not just saying, okay, we'll forget about it and I won't go. But that's not an option for me, you know, to sit back and be a punching bag. <laughs> I'm going to fight through it. Um, you know, what keeps you going uh, even after so many sort of setbacks and, you know, things that you've just spoken about? Uh, was there any one... There was one interview I did that was very bad. Like, most people know about it. And it wasn't, I, exa- it wasn't the questions that he was asking. It was the manner in which he was asking it. And uh, by the end of the interview, this is why I love interviews. Love um, by the end of, end of the interview, I called and I said, listen, and this was at, in the beginning of my career, and I said, listen, if there's something that is going to hurt somebody's sentiments, can we please have someone from the production team um, go and watch it? I don't need to watch it. Someone go watch it. Just give me that assurance that I'm not going to be attacked tomorrow because of an answer I gave. And I'm so worried. And he said, uh, well, it airs the next day and you can send somebody from your team after it's aired to go transcribe the entire interview. And because he refused to let anybody see it. And I was like, what, how do I answer this? And the interview aired. And every single, um, there were a lot of publications, uh, press, media, um, and then my fans who transcribed it for me. I didn't need to do it. And from, okay, okay, who's next? And the amount of backlash that happened on his end was so incredible. It was was insane to watch. Um, And then all of a sudden, different people would come up to me and out of nowhere or call me and say, listen, I saw this, I didn't agree with it, with you. And that was a moment where I started to feel okay people see me as human (laughs) no one should be treated like this (laughs) and it was also really hard on the flip side of that psychology saying i had to eat shit for you guys to notice i was a human being like that's the worst feeling and it took me a little while to snap out of it i went to la i kind of turned off the social media and the phone focused on my life there and you know, what to do, okay, what this, do all these things that I love to do there. It took me a little bit and then came out of it saying, okay, it is it is what it is, it's done. And we move, we have to move past it. When you were sitting in that interview uh, and going through it and those questions were put at you, what, what were you thinking? About? I have this thing inside me that won't walk away from a fight. <laughs> so... Um, there was one moment, he did give me one like little slight moment in the interview where he said, uh, he, he mentioned something about corrupting something and I was like, oh, okay, then maybe I should go. And I was doing this and he was like, no, 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 don't go. Um, but you, the, I think the worst part of that entire interview is I didn't have anybody in my corner. I had no one on my team. And it was like this many people who are behind the cameras here times two all sitting there and just watching this happen and not feeling for one second let me go help her that that was a really really bad feeling to have and afterwards I I went to all my go my team wasn't there they were doing something they weren't allowed and something was happening and um, I turned all of them and I said what did I do to you why wouldn't you stop this why wouldn't you just say for one second this is inappropriate did I do something to you? Did I hurt you? Did it, just let me know because I just think that this this type of behavior is just uncalled for. And it was through so many different emotional layers to, to that whole situation. So coming out of it, um, it's made me stronger. It may, it's made me understand that, listen, this is not normal. <laughs> and now I have a great team <laughs> behind me always watching and listening. So. Did he ever get back to you after that interview? Uh, any communication at all after no. that? Alright, thank you for sharing that with us. Um, I wanted to talk about your film career a little bit. Uh, you are also doing films in uh, the south of yes. India. Uh, tell us a little bit about that. How different is it from what you've done so far with the Indie industry? Give us a sense of what you're doing there. So there's um, a few films that I've done over the last couple of years. 
at are very outside of um, what I've done in the past. Um, like, like Charlie is very different. Um, and then there's two other roles that are extremely different, all broken down to no glamour and really focused on um, the storyline. One is a psychological thriller and one is a film based on two different, um, I don't know if I'm allowed to talk about it, <laughs> but it's very broken down. Like some people look at photos or look at my look and go, that's you? I'm like, yes, it's me. And um, the feedback that I've been getting back from different um, producers or um, people interested in buying the film, distributors, is that they were very happy um, with my role, which was out of the norm of what they were thinking they were going to see. And most of the time when you think of like directors and producers within the industry, when they think of Sunny, they're going to expect a certain image that will pop up on screen. And the nice thing was, is they were happy not to see that. They were happy to see something different, which is very, makes me so happy. Okay, uh, I'm down to my last question. How do you manage the baggage that comes with, uh, you know, uh, the previous career that you had? Uh, do you think that's faded away a bit now? Or, or maybe we, we, with this film? Um, I think that my past is made up who I am today. So I've said this many times, I'm not ashamed of what I've done in life. Has it created hurdles? <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> I won't deny it. Um, and it, hurdles and barriers, all of it. But at the same time, I have been able to push past that. And in my mind, I am past that. Everybody goes through different phases in their life. And that's a phase in my life that was good for me at that moment. And that moment had passed. And then Bollywood had started. So um, I don't I don't look at that industry as something bad. I'm not, you know, the victim of some horror story. <laughs> Every choice I made was on my own. Um, and this is a new direction. Um, the fact that we can go from A to here, Z, whatever you want, whatever letter you want to say, is unbelievable. I say almost every single day from where to where have we come from where to where have we like pushed past certain things and learned things and been able to work past the system of you know comfort <laughs> that happens in Bollywood um, and be able to now have a film accepted at the Cannes Film Festival here in France. It's beautiful. And going to walk the red carpet, me, Sonny Leone, that girl, <laughs> that worked in the tell, to being in Bollywood, to going through everything that, that I've gone through over the last 10 years, to now walking on the red carpet. Like, that's, I cry. <laughs> that's insane when you think of, like, the journey and what it means. So that's why this film is so emotionally attached to me. And I think I know my husband for sure. Um, we're definitely very much attached to it because it signifies more than just a film for me. It signifies the idea that you can go from having negative balance in your bank account to not having any money, moving to a country, not knowing anyone, to pushing your pushing past certain standards and and all these different, um, I guess, norms of how life should be. To now walking on that red carpet, it's like I'm trying my hardest not to ball because I have like all this makeup on, but it's really it's really just an amazing amazing moment. More power to you. Thank, Thank you so you. much, Annie Yoni, for speaking. Thanks for making me cry, Brute. <laughs> <laughs>